What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and learn about the strangest rules that the royal family has to follow. Now, this topic really sounded interesting to me because like many Americans, I kind of assume that the royal family can pretty much do whatever they want, you know, within reason, but it's royalty. Who, who's going to march up to the king and be like, no, 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 you can't do that. Like, <laughs> who wants to do that? But that's exactly what this is. This is a list of things the royal family can't do, rules that they have to follow, which sounded very interesting to me. I didn't even know that that really existed. I'm, you know, <laughs> there are certain rules I know they have to abide by, like they probably can't murder anybody or <laughs> do anything absolutely insane. But just the fact that there is a unique, specific set of rules and regulations they have to abide by, that's interesting. So let's take a look at what those are. Number 10, separate planes. From a purely logistical standpoint, this makes sense. Separate planes? Man, this is really grim, actually, I think. This is like, uh, oh man, the first thing that comes to my mind is they have to be in separate planes because you don't want the entire royal family together in case something bad happens. That's very sad. Is that what this is? Though it's still a morbid thing to have to think about. Yeah. Occasionally there needs to be an opportunity based on a unique circumstance um, to, to ensure that my family uh, are safe. It turns out... Yeah, yeah, man, okay. This actually makes sense. I wasn't sure what kind of strange rules the royal family had to abide by, but this is some. This is something you don't really think about, like just like in everyday life. This is only something royalty and probably, I don't know, like politicians have to do. Like the president of the United States can't fly with the vice president. They can't both be at risk of some kind of accident happening. So this actually makes sense to me out the direct heirs to the throne and or the monarch cannot fly on the same plane because of the damage it would do to the line of succession yeah. if there was a crash. Yeah. So King Charles, Prince William and Prince George aren't supposed to go on a plane together. Right. Wow, they have never <laughs> they have never all been on a plane together. Like even if they wanted to, like if they just wanted to have a chat or for convenience to talk about something, they literally are not allowed to be on a plane together and to just protect in that very, very like sad to think about circumstance that the plane went down or something. Huh. However, they don't really stick by this rule. What? And Prince William has many times flown with Kate and their kids. What? And in the modern era- Oh, so this is like a rule. Well, there you go. You know, there at the beginning of this video, I was like, I th pretty much thought like, Royalty, they can do what they want. They don't have to follow the rules of us commoners, you know? <laughs> but honestly, if this is a rule, I guess it's not a law, but a rule, they don't even abide by it because, and you know, it, it makes sense if they want to be on the plane with their children and, and their young children and stuff. Like, I, I can even understand that. Uh, it doesn't look great for the CO2 emissions to have the royals on numerous privately chartered flights to the same destinations. True, true. He's been criticised for using private jets, so launching an eco-tourism project in Amsterdam seemed bizarre. Number nine, hmm. no wearing black. No wearing black. I've never heard of this one. The royal family, members of the royal family can't wear black. Why would that be? I mean, they're showing a funeral here. Can they only wear black if it's a funeral? Can they, no black at all? I mean, can't their shoes be black? Or if they have a favorite black, like button up shirt or something, is this actually a rule? There's no way they don't wear black. A few hundred years ago, the rules about periods of mourning and mourning attire were rather a lot stricter than they are now, okay. something Queen Victoria famously took to the extreme. But for the rest of the time, royals are forbidden from wearing black outfits. There was Black outfits. That's a little more specific, black outfit. I don't know what technically is like a black shirt and black 
socks, a, a black outfit. Are the fashion police going to actually say something about this if royalty wears a black outfit? I wonder. Preserved only for solemn occasions, like funerals or right. Remembrance Day. Right. Many have broken this rule as wearing black becomes more normal. Right. However, including Princess Diana. Wait, they all, they are breaking this rule. To, this is just, <laughs> this, this, the whole point of this video is that the royalty is uh, like us. They have to abide by some rules. And yet, so far, this is the second time where it's like, eh, they, they break this rule half the time and wear black when they feel like it. And it's like, what? Really, man? Come on. <laughs> So it's more of a guideline, really. On the other side of things, royals must always have a black outfit with them when traveling, just in case something tragic happens. What? It all dates back to the death of King George VI, as the Queen hadn't taken anything black with her on her tour of Kenya. You'd think, you know, in most places in the world they could, you know, cough up like a hundred bucks or something to get a black outfit from Walmart or wherever they are. Walmart's just everywhere in the world, right? <laughs> uh, but that's another thing you don't think about that royalty has to think about. All these weird little things. Don't all, don't all get on a plane together in case it goes down. Bring a black outfit in case you need to attend a funeral. Wow. Interesting. And this also seemed to be a lot more enforced hundreds of years ago by other members of the royal family way back in the day, and not so much now as black has become fashionable. I didn't know until, okay, black is in fashion. Good for me to know. <laughs> Number eight, no shellfish. No shellfish. I want to know what happened. What happened to to ban sell, shellfish from the royal family? Who had to run to the toilet for an emergency because of the bad shellfish? I assume something like that happened, or, or what? <laughs> shellfish. Another rule that's often broken is that the royals are banned from eating shellfish. Is this because the queen personally hated this dish? <laughs> well, no. Oh. It's because shellfish has such a high risk of food poisoning if it's not cooked right. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, uh, I guess. But again, the narrator is like, another rule that is constantly broken. It's like, what? Come on. It, it's for your own health, for crying out loud. It's for their own self-interest, and they still indulge in the, the royal shellfish. It has a high rate of making you sick, if not prepared correctly. Okay. I didn't really, I don't think about that either. I don't, I don't think about that. I don't have a lot of sh shellfish, to be honest. Queen didn't want her family to come down with food poisoning, and especially not in public. Right. If they did, this would both potentially be a show of weakness, as well as risking their health. Sure, However, sure. the new king reportedly enjoys sushi and other banned dishes, so this Damn. rule could become less strict in future. Uh, it's, yeah, maybe it was a favor they were all doing for Queen Elizabeth, and now the king is like, I gotta get my sushi on, so forget it. <laughs> I'm king now. Shellfish for everyone! <laughs> Number seven, no Monopoly. Many families enjoy a game of Monopoly every so often, <laughs> but what do you do when your relatives are all so cutthroat and competitive? <laughs> no. No way this is a rule. I thought that, I thought it was getting, talking about business and the economy, like no Monopolies, and it's like, no, no, no playing the game Monopoly? The royal family can't even enjoy a Sunday night game of Monopoly, I am told. That every game descends into barbarism. What? While Monopoly often ends that way, even for those who aren't royal, apparently, the stakes are so high in Buckingham Palace that the game is now banned from being played. Because <laughs> they're worried that if the royal family plays a game of Monopoly, tensions are going to get so high they might actually have some kind of conflict, which would be bad. For God forbid the royal family had any conflicts. That's never happened, ever. 
<laughs> is this, a who made this rule? Is this actually a thing? It was specifically the queen who decided this, <laughs> revealed by Prince Andrew, when he was forced to refuse the gift of a game of Monopoly given by Leeds Building Society. <laughs> the queen, that's funny. The queen is very funny. She was very funny. She had all these rules. She really was very detail-oriented to have the, the mindset of like, I'm going to think ahead. I'm not going to allow shellfish so my family doesn't get sick. I'm not going to allow Monopoly so my family doesn't have fu meaningless fights. Really, like, she thought <laughs> quite deeply about this stuff. Since they're all still on bad terms with the disgraced Duke of York, we're not sure they'll be playing Monopoly with him again anytime soon. Okay, anyway. okay. Number six, shorts. Shorts. Yet another example of the royal's weirdly strict dress codes. It's still a tradition. Oh, do no shorts? There's no way they abide by this one. If they're eating shellfish and going on planes together and not like breaking other rules, they're wearing shorts without a doubt. And that young boys in the aristocracy don't wear trousers until they reach a certain age. That's why Prince George was, oh. up until the age of eight, only ever seen wearing shorts in public. I, I had it backwards. The, when you're a young little royal, you have to wear shorts. Is that, am I understanding this correctly? I had it backwards. What if it's cold out? What if it's like freezing cold out? Wait a minute. Even in the dead of winter. This bizarre rule isn't too strict. Even in the dead of winter? Oh no, here we go. The classic, here's the narrator jumping in to say, oh, by the way, no one obeys this rule too. <laughs> Though it has been followed consistently and extends beyond the royal family to the whole of the British upper class. It's just really? something they do. Keeping boys wearing shorts all the time until they're older. It's a what? When did this start? All the British upper class? Some kind of weird ritual. Just having the kids wear shorts. Even if it's freezing outside. I, I don't get it. Strange thing not to let a child wear trousers, even when it's snowing outside. Yeah, what? Number five, Myrtle. Ever since the wedding of Victoria, Princess Royal, in 1858, royal brides have carried sprigs of myrtle in their wedding bouquets. Myrtle. Myrt I, I don't know what myrtle is. Is that a type of flower? A type of plant? This is the first rule where I, I have no idea what it is, but it sounds relatively harmless. Some kind of tradition with the bouquet. Okay. And the veil being held there in place by the Queen's halo tiara which has been loaned to her specially for this day Ooh. by the Queen. And it's not just any myrtle. It comes from a myrtle bush that was actually gifted to Queen Victoria in the 1800s. Dang. A royal, ancient, traditional myrtle bush. I didn't even... Myrtle sounds like something you gotta be like <laughs> borderline royalty to even know what it is. Am I the only one who has never heard of myrtle before? They carry it because it supposedly brings good luck. Okay. However, anyone who's looked at the royal family over the last century can see that it doesn't seem to have worked. Um, maybe I'm just uncultured. I don't know. I, I've never heard of this. Fair enough. They've endured many crises, but most notably, all of the Queen's children, and indeed, Princess Margaret, got divorced despite the Myrtle rule. <laughs> right, goes, right, it might be time to get rid of the Myrtle. The Myrtle is not helping. To show just what sticklers they are for tradition, that they still won't ditch it. Okay. Okay. This is, this is the rule that they're like, oh, we can't break this one. This one... Definitely, we cannot break. We'll, we won't obey any of the other ones so far, but the myrtle in the bouquet must, we must abide by that. <laughs> Number four, Christmas wins. Possibly huh? one of the most notorious royal family rules, it's now known that at Christmas, it's mandatory for dinner guests to be weighed before and after dinner at Sandringham. Mum. <laughs> what? What? What is this? What? What? You're weighed before and after Christmas dinner, is it? Why? This is... Unless they have some kind of really, really, like, adequate explanation for this. I... This is just bizarre to me. What? Is there a good reason for this? Her Majesty herself just a second ago sat on these scales. 
She was very insistent that everyone joins in. This was shown in the 2021 film Spencer. As what? This is so bizarre. Even in this little movie here, showing getting weighed. It's just like, yeah, it's just like awkward. Kind of like, what's the purpose? Kristen Stewart's Princess Diana clearly hates the tradition. To make sure everyone joins in. They said no one is above tradition. Oh boy. Okay, fine. However, the palace justifies it by saying it's to ensure the guests have all been well fed over the Christmas and New Year period. They don't want anyone saying they haven't had the biggest, tastiest Christmas dinner of all time during their stay with the royals now, do they? That's, that's, not, a good, that's not a great reason. Like, okay, we're gonna say it's for ha-has and like, oh, it's to make sure you really ate your fill and had a jolly holiday. Uh, make sure you, you leave here heavier than you came in. It's like, what if you just, what if you don't have a big appetite? What if you're on a diet or something? What if you're just uncomfortable with it? Uh, but I'm sure there's lots of strange or what I think are, are sort of strange traditions like this, like all over the place when it comes to British royalty that I guess I just don't understand. And, and it boils down to sometimes tradition is just tradition. And, and that's all the explanation that there really is. They? We have to put on three pounds minimum before we leave to prove we enjoyed Christmas. Wait, really? Wait, is that part of it? You, uh, and then you get weighed when you leave and you, you better have gained weight as some kind of, it, it'd be a compliment if you gained weight to show, oh, I really stuffed my face here this, this Christmas, had a great time. It's like, what? Yes. That is the tradition. It was Prince Albert in 1847 who began it. But then, okay. everybody else in the country who hosts Christmas dinner manages to do so without forcing people to get on the scales. That's weird. Number three. That's the weirdest one so far. And again, that seems like one that the royal family abides by. Whereas a bunch of others they don't really care about. So, I don't, I don't know. Interesting priorities, I guess. Mandatory christenings. Oh. Christening. Like a, like a baptism? Or... It's becoming increasingly common for parents in the UK to forego baptisms or christenings entirely. Okay. And many won't do it because they want to leave it up to their children whether they get christened or not. Sure, sure. Isn't it? So, that's because he's okay. Wow. This, this one doesn't shock me. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that the British royalty has some kind of long traditional relationship with the church and christenings and stuff. So I don't know, this doesn't shock me, I guess. That's not the case for the royal family though. The monarch, as well as being the head of state, is also the head of the Protestant Church of England, ah. which means it's mandatory for all royal children to get christened into the church well, There you go, well. there you go, okay. That would explain it. Man. We understand this because of the king's position in charge of the church, but it's definitely archaic. Plus, the royal christenings follow the exact same order of service that they did nearly two centuries ago. Yeah, it's interesting because there's a bunch of things where it, you don't decide if you're born into royalty. So to be forced to adopt some kind of set of rules and traditions by force, like you must be weighed. You must have your child christened. You must be christened. Like, it, it is kind of sad in a way that they don't have any say in this. Or, or probably they feel like they don't have any say in this. I don't know if some of them have tried to, to disobey some of these more, kind of, these rules that are, are a bit more serious, probably. There's a historical footnote here. What's that? Her mother wore it at her christening. Oh, really? Huh. So did I. Oh, how fascinating. Number two, stop eating with the sovereign. We've huh? all been having dinner when the most important person at the table decides they've had enough, so everybody else must stop eating too. What? Unless, of course, you're a normal person who isn't part of the royal family. If you are ever given the privilege... You... See, this is again. This is... This is... Probably silly. I mean... This... <laughs> I, I could see this as being a rule back in the day when people were terrified of the king or queen. But right nowadays, it's like, it seems like the king and queen are trying to become more relatable. And it's like traditions like this, where 
oh, everyone has to stop eating when the king is is full and he stops eating. It's like, real, is that is that really the rule you want to, like, keep going? Village of dining with the king, this is a rule that needs to be followed. When the wow. king stops eating, so should you. Wow. Because that means the meal is done. This is not only weird, but could lead to food wastage if you take longer to eat your meal than he does. Yeah, you're, if you're eating with the king, you're like, oh my god, like just stuffing it down your face as fast as you can, because you're probably getting a, a good meal. It's probably pretty fancy. And you're like, I have a, I have a clock going here. When the king, you're glancing over at the king like, how much has he eaten? Because <laughs> you have to be done when he is done. That is, that's a bit bizarre. You're also not allowed to go to bed before the king. Something else completely ridiculous. What? Number one. What? Are those rules actually followed? Those traditions, basically. Those are followed. I mean, according to this video, at least, I don't know for sure. So, wow. Wow. Okay, here is number one. No voting. A very good evening. For the fourth time in the space of five years, oh. the future of the United Kingdom is uncertain. The... Royal family is not allowed to vote. That actually makes sense to me. Because you do want the, the monarchs to be impartial, not show favoritism. This, this makes sense. This one is both totally understandable and completely alien all at the same time. <laughs> Despite some of the royals, like the late queen, being consistently popular with most of the British people in the polls, mm -hmm. nobody likes the idea of them having a say in our democratic elections. Right, and then if the, the royalty started giving their opinion, their political opinion, that really could influence people. Like seriously, they could have an actual impact on elections, like in the UK, which would not be, I don't think that would be good. That's not really the purpose, huh? The question tonight is whether any party can get 326 seats or more and send their leader through that door with a majority. As such, the royals, unelected as they are, aren't supposed to let the public know their political opinions right. and aren't meant to intervene in government. Okay. Our exit poll is suggesting that there will be a conservative majority when all the votes are counted after this election. But on the other hand- This, this is the first one. This is the first rule. Uh, well, I, there's been a couple, but this is one of the rules that I, I agree with and I actually understand. On the other hand, they are British citizens just like the rest of us, and the idea of them not being allowed to vote, something that many working class men and women fought tooth and nail for, is still somewhat odd. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe they could vote in private without telling anyone, but they might be asked questions about it. It, it. it might be just easier for everyone if they can't vote, even though, because they're, they're not like at ordinary everyday people. As much as we want them to be more relatable, they're not. They, have a, they carry a lot of influence. So, and they're not supposed to be politicians. They're not supposed to be influencing elections. I mean, from what I understand, I'm just some American, like looking at this from the outside. So that this one makes sense, I think. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from- Wow, there you have it. There you have it. That was by WatchMojo UK. And I enjoyed that a lot. That was a fascinating kind of look into British royalty. A topic that a lot of Americans, you know, we can't really relate much to it. We don't understand all of it, but it's fascinating to learn about. And fascinating to, to see some of these sort of rules and traditions that apply to the royal family. I had, I had not heard of these, and, and it was actually quite fun and uh, interesting too. Some, of, I mean, a lot of these. Funny enough, a lot of these they're just like, yeah, here's a rule that they don't follow. Here's another one they don't care about. They here they can't play Monopoly, and then it's like uh, a couple that they do take seriously, which are the more traditional ones, which were a little bizarre, like getting weighed getting weighed at Christmas time, and I don't know. So either way, this was fascinating. So I enjoyed it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to the UK and UK culture and stuff in the UK I've never learned about or seen before, 
feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.